Hi everybody, I'm Rook. Welcome to the table, and this is the Zendikar Rising pre-release pack. Welcome to another Magic the Gathering product. This one is brand spanking new, came out on September 18th. I picked up my pre-release pack from my local game store, and typically on a new set release like this, they have pre-release packs, they have booster draft boxes, they have a couple other bundles. I like to pick up the pre-release pack because I really enjoy playing limited format. So for those of you who aren't too familiar with what a pre-release pack is for a new Magic product, pre-release pack is a pack that contains six boosters, a roll down die, a card that gets you uh, packs on arena, and a foil printed card with the uh, date stamped in there. So this one's probably gonna say something like September 18th and 19th, 2020. There'll be one foil of that. And typically this pack is open at your local game store and then you open it with everybody that gathered for that event that evening, that afternoon. It goes kind of all weekend. You open the pack and you construct a limited 40 card deck out of the cards that you opened in your packs. Now, Wizards has officially delayed sanctioned tournaments through the release of Zendikar Rising. So unfortunately, I'm unable to open this and enjoy a limited sealed format with the pre-release pack. So I brought it home to open for you guys today. So on the left, you're seeing the pre-release pack itself with the six packs, the die, etc., And then my local game store also attached two additional 15 card draft boosters. I believe that a lot of places are doing this now, even if you ordered online, just as kind of a, a form of prize support. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this pack. Okay, here it is, the Zendikar Rising pre-release pack. Nifty little box it comes in, right? This is like a huge deck box. Expect to see a lot of big green beasts here. This is Zendikar, so the theme is definitely usually green. That's everything out of the kit. Here is the roll down die. Wow, this is a light green. I like that, look at that. You can tell it's from Zendikar because this is the Zendikar symbol here. That is the 20. This is a light green. I was expecting it to be like a really dark, sickly forest green. That is a nice die. Okay, so we have the die there. Here is a little pamphlet about how to build your pre-release deck. So for those of you that try and jump right into an event like this, and you're not sure exactly how to do your limited deck 40 cards as opposed to any other magic deck is usually 60 cards. It shows you kind of what you want to look for, how many lands you want to have in your deck. It looks like it has some specific maybe synergies. Looks like this one's all about equipment. I know there is a lot of equipment in this set and so that kind of just gives you some insight there. So a nice little addition there. Okay and here is our foil. You can see this says 19 to 20 September 2020. This is the Skyclave Apparition. This is one and two white. When Skyclave Apparition enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost four or less. Okay, so it's a good form of removal. It's a 2-2 core spirit, but it has the exile. There are a lot of white cards that usually, they're like a creature that comes in and they temporarily exile a card until it's removed off the field, so this is some good removal here for standard. But that is our foil. So in the foil, you can certainly use that in your limited deck as well, that, that foil there. So this is the arena code that uh, gives me, oh, I'm going to black that out, right? Yeah, maybe I am. Or it's probably already redeemed at this point. Sorry, guys. But that's going to get you, I think, six packs on Magic the Gathering Arena. And then here's a little divider. And here are the six packs. Oop, bumped the camera there. Okay. So, typically you open these six packs, you construct your deck, and then you play, oh, depending on how many people there, maybe four to eight rounds of Swiss. So let's start opening these packs. I will try my best to sort the cards as best I can, as if I am sorting to attempt to construct a limited deck like I'm at my local game store. So let's get started. All right, since this is a new pack, I'm gonna, more, I'm gonna slowly kind of go through the cards here, and then I will expand maybe a little bit on some of the rares or, or mythic rares. So we have Smite the Monstrous for white, Synchronized Spellcraft for red, Dauntless Survivor for green, Blood Price for black, Tajuru Snarecaster for green, Royal Eruption for red, Strength of Solidarity, green, Living Tempest, first blue card, all right. Blue Flyer right there. Seagate Colossus, all right, this is a colorless. Put that one down there. Disenchant, hey, look at that. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's a pretty, just straight removal, and it's a common. That is white. 
Rolling Regrowth for green. Merfolk Falconer. This is a an uncommon, so is Rolling Regrowth, actually. So getting into the uncommons now, that's for blue. Palaka Predation. This is an uncommon sorcery. And it's got the triangle in the corner, which means there's probably a card in the back. Yes, this is the, or Palaka Cavern. So this can be a land as well, where there's a sorcery on this side. That is for black. Lithoform Engine. I've heard good things about this. I think that this is a really good commander card. So this is a legendary artifact. This actually probably goes for a little bit. For two and tap, copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Three and a tap, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the card copy. Or four and tap, copy target permanent spell you control. This copy becomes a token. So there's a lot of versatility here. And uh, you can see how that would work really well in even modern or, or standard decks today as well as Commander. So Lithoform Engine, that's a great one right there. All right, we have a Full Art Mountain, that's really nice. And that is for the first pack. I know I'm gonna run out of room here, but we're on to pack two. Okay, Cascade Seer for blue. Farsight Adept for white. Tormenting Voice for red. Jiraga Visionary for green. Expedition Skulker Black. McKindy Ox, that's a nice, look at that art. I love that art. I like the, the pink clouds there, that is uh, that is white. Rabbit Bite for green. Cliffhaven Kite Sail, this is an artifact equipment. This is a colorless. Akum Hellhound, one cost red, it looks pretty good. Thwart the Grave for black, Fireblade Charger red. Fearless Fledgling, look at him, he's so cute. Fearless Fledgling for white. This is going to the uncommons here. Hagra Mauling, this is a rare instant for black. The spell costs one less to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands. Destroy card, target creature. So there you go, black with their removal. And on the back side here is Hagra Brood Pit, which is a land to add a black. So you can see that triangle there means it's got the two sides. Reclaim the Waste, this is a common, but it is a foil. That's pretty nice. That's for green. And we have a Full Art Island. Okay, that was pack two. Tormenting Voice for red. Negate for blue. All right, we're getting negates here. Practice Tactics for white. This is Zendikon for green. Let's move these up. I want to try and keep it all on camera if I can. Rotag Bug Catcher for red. Risen Riptide blue. Marusa Brute green. Utility Knife. Here's some of that equipment. This is an artifact equipment. In fact, there are a lot of cards that interact with artifacts in this set, I believe. So that is a colorless. Sizzling Barrage for red. Deadly Alliance Black. All right, Wind Rider Wizard. This is our first uncommon of the pack. This is a flyer. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. So another thing about this set is that it plays a lot on the party, which is if you control a wizard, warrior, cleric, and... What was the other one? We'll remember. We have Moss Pit Skeleton. This is our first dual color. This is black and green. Kabira Takedown, this is for white, and looks like it's an instant and also doubles as the Kabira Plateau, which is land for white. Soul Shatter, here's a rare instant. Each po opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control. There you go, black with your removal. Good rare there. And Full Art Swamp. Okay, so three packs down, and you can kind of see just how it really kind of stays balanced. You know, I think that we have just about the same count, very close to the same count for each color. So you can really build kind of whatever you want. Now some packs are less forgiving and you find, oh shoot, looks like I'm building red today or I'm just building uh, blue black or something like that. But we have a pretty good balance so far. So this is pack four. Fissure Wizard, here's a wizard. Goblin Wizard for red. Does the Royal Mage Merfolk Wizard for blue. Expedition Healer, hey, there's a cleric going in the party. That's a white. Prowling Felidar for white. Dreadworm, you see how the art kind of changes here and the card's super dark here. Dreadworm for black. Expedition Diviner, Merfolk Wizard for blue. McKindy Ox, okay, so we saw the first McKindy Ox. You can see that there's two different art styles there. So that's what, I, there's, that's for white. A Dreadworm for black. Canopy Baleth for green. Akum Hellhound again. Hey, there's the uh, two different variations of the Hellhound. Okay, 
Obviously, this one looks really nice. Spoils of Adventure, another dual color here. We have white and blue instant. This is our first uncommon. Skyclave Shadow Cat, uncommon for black. Zoff Consumption, a sorcery. Each opponent loses four life and you gain four life. Okay. Each opponent. Yeah, we're looking at commander here potentially. And then it also doubles as the Zoff Blood Bog land for black. Crawling Barons land. Add colorless. Four. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on Crawling Barons, then you have to become a zero. Then you may have it become a zero zero elemental creature until end of turn it's still land. That's a lot of utility there. Colorless land, good. And we have a full art plane. See, look at that. Oh, and we have an insect token. That's cool. So getting a well-rounded um, amount of lands as well. Let's go into pack. Pack number five. Another negate for blue. If you like playing negate, there you go. Practice tactics for white. I'm seeing some duplicates here. Fisher Wizard, Might of Marasa for green. Ghastly Ghost Hunter for black. Turn Timber Ascetic for green. Stonework Pack Beast. This is an artifact creature, colorless beast. It's a common. Malakir Blood Priest. Here's a Vampire Cleric for black. I've heard good things about this one. This is a common card too. When Malakir, a Blood Priest, enters in the battlefield, each opponent loses X life. You gain X life. Where X is the number of creatures in your party. Ah, your party consists of up to one of each of Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, and Wizard. It's Rogue. That was the one I was missing. So this is another good card, I believe, for Commander, because you can have multiple opponents lose life. That's for Black. Cleansing Wildfire for Red. Cunning Geyser Mage for Blue. Mind Carver. Uncommon, uncommon artifact equipment for Black. Goma Fada Vanguard. Uncommon for Red. Umara Wizard, Uncommon Merfolk Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, Umara Wizard gains flying until end of turn. Okay, there you go. A lot of uh, blue flyers in this pack, and this is also, this doubles as the Umara Skyfalls, which is a uh, land that taps for blue. The Crag Plate Baileth, that's a rare beastie for green. And we have a full art forest. I love these full arts. Let's open our last pack of the pre-release kit. Pyroclastic Hellion for red. Shell Shield for blue. Tazim Raptor for white. Skyclave Squid, another great art card right here. Skyclave Squid, that is for blue. Canopy Baileth for green. Highborn Vampire for black. Dauntless Unity for white. Strength of Solidarity for green. Royal Eruption, red. Stonework Pack Beast for colorless. Vine Gecko, that's new. This is uncommon for green. Ruin Crab, one cost crab for blue. There's a lot of good landfall effects in this set. This one's whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills three cards. Of course, that 2021 introduced us to um, some really good mill techniques, and Ruin Crab looks like it's going to support that pretty well. It's for blue. Spike Field Hazard, uncommon instant for red. Deals one damage to any target. If a permanent dealt damage this turn, or this way would die this turn, exile it instead. That also looks like it doubles as the Spike Field Cave, which is a uh, tap for red. Myriad Construct, a colorless rare. If Myriad Construct was kicked, it enters the battlefield with a 1 1 counter on it for each non basic land your opponent controls. So this is originally a 4 cost, but it has kicker 3, which means you could spend a total of 7 to get its kicker effect. When Myriad Construct becomes a target of a spell, sacrifice it and create a number of 1-1 one, one colorless Construct artifact creature tokens equal to its power. Well, that's pretty broken, right? That looks pretty good. Myriad Construct. And a full art mountain. And that's it. This is the pre-release pack opened. I mean, it's six 15-card draft boosters. That's a lot of cards to pick from. So now what you would do is you would take this mess and you construct a 40-card deck. The 40 card deck is typically something like 17 lands, 23 spells, and in the spells you mix in what creatures, instants, artifacts, enchantments you're looking for. But there's a lot to pick from here. I would really have to go through everything that came out here to, uh, to determine what I wanted to build. Notice that I only drew two kind of dual colors there. So we're looking at white-blue synergy and we're looking at green-black synergy. But I have a habit to build around white and blue, and I do like the flyers. So I think that I would probably build a blue here, although I know that we drew a lot of good removal for black, and uh, obviously green is a good color 
to think about in this set as well. So maybe I'd do something like green, black, blue, black. The removal is super good in a limited format. You're looking for bombs and removal. So there's a lot to choose from here. For those of you that have never opened a pre-release pack, this is kind of what you can expect. And when physical and local events start coming back up, I heartily recommend you guys go out to new releases. This is technically considered the pre-release, although I guess you could say that it really is the release. But that gives local game stores the opportunity to host events like this where you can play in this limited format. And these pre-release kits and packs are usually available even long after the pre-release kind of weekend and, and window is over. So you can really pick up one of these at any time. In fact, you should be able to pick up a pre-release pack of most past sets if you wanted to check that out or even try and get something going in a limited format with your friends. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that uh, this gives you some insight on what Zendikar Rising has to offer. Whether you're playing Standard, Modern, EDH, and Commander, it'll be another good set to add to your collection. I'm excited to put this in the binder. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to hit the like button and of course, subscribe for more. Thanks guys, I'll catch you later.